So we have the former uh, CTO of Pixar here who just started a startup called Toy Talk and he's going to bring a, a really interesting, fun game to uh, your children, probably around six years old, uh, are going to really enjoy this. We're going to see it right now. It's called Toy Talk. And who are you? Hi, Robert. I'm Warren Jacob. I'm the uh, CEO of Toy Talk, and uh, I spent a uh, a lot of my career at uh, Pixar. Worked there um, on Toy Story and Finding Nemo, and I uh, ran the software team there for a while. And uh, two years ago, pulled together a team to uh, put together Toy Talk, and we're coming to market very soon now. And w for people who don't know, I usually don't cover games very much, but I, I've been knowing you for a long time, and I've found your approach to making games very interesting. But w what is Toy Talk, and who is it for? Well, Toy Talk's really about the idea of entertainment as conversation. And we, we're trying to create characters and tell stories by talking to audiences and having audiences talk back to us. And um, some people categorize this as games, some categorize this as entertainment, um, some categorize this as a new form perhaps in the middle somewhere. Um, for us, for the most part, uh, we view our success if we can get an audience to talk back to us a second time and enjoy the experience of meeting our characters and our stories by, uh, by conversation. And so uh, explain what you would do. What's the character's name, by the way? Winston. The Winston Show is coming out this week. The Winston Show. Yes. And what would I do with Winston? Well, Winston is a, you can kind of think of him a bit like somewhere between Monty Python and The Muppet Show, perhaps somewhere in that spectrum. But uh, he's an animated character, uh, a bit like a tall um, game show host like Banana, perhaps, if you want to go there. And um, he's putting on a show, which you're in. And uh, part of the show maybe is uh, some parts are uh, trivia question, kind of like Jeopardy, a little Alex Trebek style there. Yeah. We have um, some fireside chats that are a bit like a Charlie Rose interview or inside the actor's studio themed area where he's talking back and forth to you about topics of the day. Um, there's a part where Winston uh, and a psychic Ellington are putting together stories with you, sort of like a choose your own adventure, um, in conversation back and forth, um, giving you options and you're directing the story as well in two ways. Um, and we also have a chance to meet a whole bunch of fun figures from history as well too. So we have a, a you versus history section where you get to come across Blackbeard the Pirate and Marie Antoinette and the Blue Whale and Lewis and Clark and a whole bunch of figures in history who they bring into the show just for a little bit as guest appearances as well and enjoy all those kind of different ways of conversing back and forth with you, Winston, and, uh, and the show. So, you know, my, my kids all have their own iPad and most of the games are sort of like Minecraft where they're really doing a lot of manipulation of the world and, and with their fingers. Right. Are they doing manipulation of anything on the screen with their fingers or are they just talking with their voice? We take advantage of the touch screen to the extent that, like a Siri, um, there's a whole to talk sort of metaphor. So when you're saying, hey, Winston, how are you? Or my favorite sport is cricket or soccer. Um, you're pressing the talk and that really helps us understand exactly when you're speaking to us versus talking to your friends or siblings around. Um, and in the map section, you can also fly around to some extent. So we use the accelerometer a little bit. Majority of the interactions through conversation. So it's uh, really voice, voice forward as an application that way. Um, and all of our responses and how Winston behaves and acts back is very largely based on what you say to him. And so we're trying to create a character who focuses much more on conversation than, for example, like Minecraft hand manipulation, which is also cool. My, my kids yeah. love that as well. Um, we want to explore the space of, of conversation. Uh, we just feel that opens up with a lot of opportunities to communicate character um, in, in a new way uh, for us as authors to create in that space of writing dialogue um, and getting the kind of vocally rich performance that you can get from professional actors that we have behind it as well too um, is the area we chose to go. Interesting. So this is almost uh, this is a, like a new movie that you're talking with, right? Yeah. Well, I'm sure your kids have watched on uh, on TV uh, Blue's Clues or Dora the Explorer, yeah. various shows, and often you'll see someone like Dora say, "Hey, where's the map?" And like every kid is going, "There, there, there!" and yelling back at the TV set. And then Dora like waits three, four, five. Right, kids, the map's over here. Well, we're actually listen back now as yeah. opposed to just be like a speaker only outbound using the microphone inbound too. So when you say it's over there, we go, yes it is and respond back to you. And so to take that next step in entertainment to actually have the character respond back to what you say, as opposed to just to sort of touch that fourth wall and sit there waiting for a response, actually listen back. Uh, before you arrived at, at the final product uh, that, that you're shipping, 
Uh, you've pivoted several times. And I, mm. I remember talking to you about context, because I'm writing a book on context, and yeah. you were thinking about, well, if I had a game or a, a toy that changed its behavior if it was raining out, for instance. Right. Are you still thinking along those lines, or did you sort of dive in and get rid of some of the contextual things that you were thinking of? Well, I think for, for Winston as a character, as he is present and aware on your iPad, talking back to you, we know time of day, we know day of week, we know season of the year, uh, we know, generally speaking, weather broadly in the area that you're in. Um, we make constant jokes about that. So uh, at home, testing the other night, I was playing at probably about 11.30 at night. My kids were well asleep, and Winston, on a school night, being concerned that it was past the hour most kids are up, says back to me, hey, by the way, is it a little bit late to be playing right now? I was like, Winston, it's okay, I'm the adult. Okay, cool. And kind of carried on. Um, but that's just an example of those are all, that's material. We can use effectively as a comedian, as we work with our audience, um, take advantage of that. Yeah. Um, not for the purpose of search and mobile, that's Apple's and Google's business, but for the purpose of entertaining you. Um, I, I both want to know sort of what your favorite sports are, what's your favorite, favorite food, favorite subject in school, or questions we ask back and forth, but take advantage of the context of the environment that you're in and around you, um, so that I know if it's light or dark, sunsets up or down, is it the middle of the night, on a school night, are you sure you're playing at midnight right now? And that just makes a richer experience that we can take advantage of. You said that you were the adult. Does uh, Winston have a, a relationship with a parent that's different <laughs> than with the kid? I, I should get for a while. I, I don't know that actual quote will work or not. I haven't <laughs> that particular one. Um, but I will say that we as a company absolutely do. Um, parents create accounts uh, through TwiTalk, and we get consent from the parent to let us um, talk to their children and listen back to them. And um, there are many artifacts of the play experience. Um, kids sometimes ask to take photographs of themselves with Winston, and we have or an iPad, we do that. Um, and those are offered back to the parent and the parent only. And the parent can choose what to do with that material, but to let the parent be aware uh, of the child's play experience and the whole family to enjoy it, this made sense to us to do as a parent myself. Um, I both enjoy playing games with my children sometimes. We play multiplayer games upon occasion, or maybe frequently perhaps, uh, in my house. Um, but to share uh, with the parents what the kids are doing as well, too. It just seemed like a more fun thing to do for the whole family. And so that's part of, yes, part, very much part of what the company offers. You really had to think a lot uh, about privacy and law and the, I call it the freaky factor, right, with, mm. with listening, right. uh, being on in a family room with a kid. That, that, that triggers a lot of people's uh, angst about right. companies that are studying or prodding or advertising or things like that. Can you tell me about some of the framework you had to think through when you were designing this game? And yeah, I think cause that Because it's for six-year-old kids, which means there's a whole set of legal right. Rock laws, right? Because when you turn 13, the, the law changes and you can do more aggressive Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Um, for us, we want to entertain the whole family. And so that means that we don't want to exclude 12, 11, 10, nine-year-olds. We want the whole family to be involved in the entertainment that we offer. And so to do that, um, uh, we have to get consent from parents uh, to allow us to speak to their kids and listen, actually more importantly, listen to the children and re recognize their speech. And uh, to do that, no real company that we're aware of has tried to enter the market at that level before. Um, so we have to get consent from parents to do that. Um, but mostly it's because uh, for us to, I guess I'll say it this way. We, I grew up in a place at, at, at Pixar and there are many other studios like this that don't believe in writing down to children. We want to create content that the whole family um, can enjoy. And, and yes, there is material there for um, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 year olds. I would say probably, I think we peak actually around eight. It's gonna be second to third grade. Um, and I've seen children as young as five and as old as 12 enjoy it. Um, but I say that around the, I don't know, Star Wars and Lego age groups, which are seven, eight, nine, that range, mm -hmm. is about where we have, I think, our sweet spot as far as the younger audiences go. But to offer them, an enjoyable experience that's, that's fun and humorous and engaging, while the parent is also laughing, overhearing that from the kitchen perhaps, and oh, that was a funny joke. Who's that Winston guy? I'm talking back and forth is sort of our aim. And so to do that, um, there are some laws that matter in the space, the most important one being COPPA, the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, and the Federal Trade Commission um, changed that on July 1st of this year. So that, so, oh sorry? How did the law change? Yeah, and then one of the important ways for us was that um, uh, for now, any audio recording of a child is considered personal information. So that means to do speech recognition on a child, you have to get consent from a parent to do that. Yeah. And that was not the case before. Um, the law also changed their photographs, and Facebook cares a lot about that, so does Instagram, um, and other races in behavioral advertising that Google probably cares about. But for us, it uh, has to do with speech recognition. 
Yeah, you don't so, you don't pass any of this data over to Facebook or Google or anything like that, right? Yeah. Well, do you ask ask? Uh, well, first of all, kids aren't supposed to be on Facebook under thirteen, right? So that's right. So parents create accounts at TwiTalk, yeah. and we age gate for that as well too, and expect people the parent of the child to create the account. That's why we do an email verification back to that parent as well. Um, and when the parent creates the account and gives us consent via an email loop that's closed and says, yes, I consent to my child using it, at that point we allow you into the play experience. So that is very atypical for entertainment applications on the App Store. If you look at them, very few do this. Um, so many means that Apple had to occur to help all of us understand how best to navigate the space so that we are um, both compliant with the laws as well too, but most importantly, meet the intent of the law which is to keep the parents informed about what's happening with their children and their data, and know exactly where it is, and be in complete control of it at all times. Um, How so, much does the game cost? Uh, we're actually offering the first season of The Winston Show uh, at no charge to the audience, um, for the, uh, at least for the run of 2013. Um, and for us to develop um, a new form of entertainment means we have to learn kind of what the audience most likes about what we're doing, um, which parts do they enjoy the most, which parts do they you know, go past fast forward, which parts do they come back to, to get a sense for what's working. And that's part of the conceit of, a, of a, a comedy show like we have that has so many different skits and, and, and things in it, is we get to try some experiences that are very on rails, um, where a multiple choice question only gives you a couple answers back, to really wide open questions about you know, how does a teacher become your teacher at school? Well, I don't know. Well, how do you think it happens? Is it a race on the playground? Well, probably not. And we're exploring a really open-ended question there that children can say a whole bunch of things back to us. Um, one of the sort of fun parts about working with the whole family this way and trying to entertain the whole family is that kids say the darndest things. Yeah. And so part of the joy is seeing sort of what's said back to us and be able to write back to that ourselves um, and to have a chance to really write to an audience who we can hear for the first time is really got our writing team super, super excited because unlike other forms of media where you sort of finish it, ship it, and then play in the theater or broadcast it, at this point now we're hearing people speak back to us. And that's it's, partly why we're not doing a demo. Usually I have a demo. Yeah. Because you want a, the kids to discover this. To some, yes, to some extent. It's important that we don't share it a little too much ahead of time. Um, and also, technically, given the amount of very complex audio maneuvering we do on the device, um, we can't really jack into recording system without taking half the experience kind of throwing away the other. Um, that's why Siri was not demoed live on stage. It was always done as a video recording. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it, Gaming is interesting. I, cause it, how do you come up, you know, with with the idea <laughs> of a, a company like this? I, you know, you worked inside Pixar, so you saw the Pixar way of developing character yeah. and developing movie and entertainment, and that evolved, right? That that pivoted big time because when you started at Pixar, they they were a technology company, really. Right? Yeah, trying to work in the um, uh, as a Macintosh software company, yeah. um, which d didn't last. <laughs> Became an animation studio shortly thereafter. You, know, you asking about the production process itself, though, creatively, or the idea of the business overall? The the creative process, yeah, because coming yeah. up with this yeah. is not something I have a skill to do, right? It's interesting, interesting kind of comment. It's um, different people sort of work different ways uh, creatively. Um, some tend to explore ideas in in, uh, in hand drawn sketch form, some in written form uh, by writing sort of treatments, or sort of paragraph narrative. Some in screenplay dialogue form. Um, and uh, I'm not actually sure right now. We've only made the Winston Show. We've made one project so far. I don't quite know what the what best practices will be when it comes to conversational entertainment in a few years from now. So we sort of did the best we could and took some of the parts of the process that we learned from Pixar and Disney, uh, which involves storyboarding, um, drawing hand-drawn sketches of the kind of things you want to see your characters do, the kind of actions they take, um, writing alongside that um, examples of dialogue and conversation. Uh, as, as a screenplay would look almost, yeah. and then pitching those. So get in a room that's about the size here, and uh, someone's open the board. All right, so we start here, and then this happens, and then we do this, and then that, and this is the funny part here, it goes here, and goes through and pitches. Um, and there are rules to a pitching session, which we try to adhere to. Like, you don't interrupt in the middle, let the person get through, and give them their full attention. Afterwards, then you give your notes. Um, was a way to kind of get the gear started. And uh, a couple ideas uh, were thrown out there, but in the end, the Winston Show was one we felt was best expressed and in 2013 able to be achieved. Yeah. Um, part of this, when you're in a new form of media, if I go back to like, well, before I was at Pixar, well, let's go way back now to the, you know, the short films that were made back in the late 80s. Part of what you're able to do is based on what the technology can reach for. So you have limitations that are very severe. 
Um, today, if you're at a AAA gaming studio or a giant film production facility or a TV effects house, to a decent degree, all imagery can be created. It's a matter of cost and time, but you could do it. That was not just 20 years ago. Yeah. In this area of conversation, that is absolutely the case today. Um, how far natural language understanding goes, how deep and nuanced conversation is, is very hard, even for giant computer systems to, in real time to deal with. Um, so we had to kind of size the creative reach to push that boundary as far as we could, but still able to ship. And we have to walk that line for several years to come as we get better at doing this over time. We can then reach farther. How quiet does the place have to be to play, play Winston? You know, play with Winston. Um, I, I mean, can, I, can my kids play with it in the back of the car where it's really noisy? Yeah. So Sammy, um, my son, uh, was playing with us in the back of our minivan going down I-5 to the grandparents' house this summer. Um, and uh, he did fine past Harris Ranch. Oh, it smelled bad for over cows. But he was in the back uh, on LTE network, happily chatting with Winston for about half an hour back there. And that works pretty well. Uh, if you're on a, if you're, uh, a car tends to have sort of a floor of noise, it's pretty common. What's more tricky is, let's say a fire truck goes by, or you're like at a restaurant and people are talking in the background, that may get different audio tracks coming in. But one of the reasons why you went to a touch-to-talk uh, interface is that we didn't expect the Winston show to regularly be a co-play experience. And so if one child's playing, it is almost always the case that other family members both of their kids, brothers, sisters, friends, or parents kind of come into the room because they hear a voice they don't recognize in their house that's kind of funny, making some jokes. Who's talking? And then come in, oh, who's the Winston guy? But now you've got three or four kids piled on the sofa talking to Winston, and they can't talk at once. And for a while, we tried what's called a wild mic, which is just on all the time. But in that situation, no matter who says what, it's all coming in bound to us. The dog barks, the fire truck goes by, somebody's on television, and we're hearing that all at the same time. And no technology on Earth today can differentiate that many conce- uh, concurrent audio streams coming into one mono mic, especially on a mobile device. So the touch-to-talk metaphor, which again is like Siri, so every kid got that immediately. Oh, it's like Siri, but funny, so yeah. it's great. Um, once that w- happened, uh, what also occurred then was w- what I call like the... Um, the commentary about the experience. So if we crack a funny joke, you'll often see, that was really funny. Yeah, it was, totally back and forth, and then respond back to us. And it lets people talk without us having to listen to them and makes the, it just felt more intentful, like the way the experience went that way and allowed kids to laugh and have a great time without us trying to struggle with everything coming at us at once. So that's kind of how it worked out that way. It's really crazy starting a game, a company like this, uh, a, a game like this. Yeah, I mean, it's been a joy to create, but I would also say that one thing that's very, very different than my last job at like a meaningful level is that this feels much more like a Broadway show where we spent six, nine, ten months working all in to get the sets built, the characters built, the costuming up, and the show up on the stage. Yeah. And then we got a live show. We're putting on on Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday and every day afterwards uh, where the audience is in the house now and we have to perform that show again and again. Yeah. Um, and th- yeah, that's moving that over time and developing and making it better and writing back to the audience is like a whole different universe for me. So that's super exciting for us. So I think you had a video that shows some of the creative process behind how uh, Winston works. Yeah, it's so basically a how-to video about how the show works and we'll like, uh, roll that now if you want to. Yeah. Welcome to The Winston Show. I'm Winston, and this is Ellington. Ellington put this whole show together. He even created this microphone button so we can hear you. It's so simple. Wait, Ellington, I didn't mean to say what you built was simple. I'm sure it took lots of hard work. Really, there's so much to do. You can literally go head to head with colorful characters in You versus Or choose which story to create in the writer's room. You can test your knowledge in Win with Winston. Ellington can take your picture as you try out different looks in the costume department. And of course, we can sit and have a fireside chat. You can do all this and more as our featured guest here on The Winston Show. The Winston Show is available for the iPad for free on the App Store. Download today. That was cool. Um, where does this go now? And, and do you think mm-hmm. this is going to cause a bunch of competitors to, uh, to jump in and do this same kind of entertainment? The mm-hmm. same way in movies, you know, there was one movie one day and now there's <laughs> a different one every, every few days, right? 
I guess I have two hopes about that. Um, at some level, this is a very, very hard thing to pull off, creatively and technically and business-wise, to even pull together a team of this disparate um, kinds of backgrounds and talents. Um, so I think it will be a little challenging for folks to just jump into this space willy-nilly. Um, so that gives us you know, some position in the market that's sort of unique. But at a larger level, I think there is really a future in characters that talk back and to having a, a, that kind of relationship that only conversation can bring with characters that can be created by authors like those at Toy Talk, that kind of authorship. So I actually hope that we have lots and lots and lots of characters um, who talk back in the years to come. And I hope that we produced or produce the best content in that space. Yeah. And so if we are the, the company who has um, Winston, Ellington, and characters and stories beyond that, they really stand up in that space um, and offer yeah, a, a really compelling, entertaining experience to the whole family in that regard, that would be a great world for us to operate in. And I would happily spend a 20 year run at Toy Talk or beyond in that world. Um, but that can't be just us. So. You worked with John Lasseter, who's really one of the best character development guys yeah. out there, right? He came up with Nemo and all sorts of different characters that we fell in love with over the last decade. What did you learn about character development and why, why are you, why are you good at it where uh, like, um, hmm. uh, some of the other guys uh, haven't been good at it and have gone <laughs> away or are well, I, not I doing well? I'll start by saying I'll leave it to you to claim I'm good at it or not. That's not a thing that, that an author ever claims well, themselves. It's more my six-year-old. <laughs> me, me, I'm too um, old to get this stuff. But <laughs> and maybe I'll start the answer with I know that, in fact, I'm not that good at it. That's why I, I founded the company. I'm not the writer and I'm not the person doing the character designs themselves. Um, we have a phenomenal creative team uh, at Toy Talk. Um, who we've worked really hard to recruit to come join the company and, and to bring those both skills individually and in combination together. Um, and I think that a lot of folks probably think they probably are really good writers. Most of them are not. And yeah. to at least have an, a modicum of self-awareness that that may not be, like, that was not Steve Jobs' gift. He didn't write the screenplays or Pixar movies. No. Um, John certainly did, so did Andrew, so did Joe, so did Lee, so did Bob, so did a bunch of folks who were there and Pete. Um, and others, many more that I've, a hundred more I haven't mentioned right now. Um, and knowing where your skill set and talents really lie is an important part of the space, because if you think you're the other thing, usually you're not very good at it. And so, um, for us to create a company um, that really champions uh, creative contribution and excellence in that regard, um, and doesn't outsource it, um, that is part of our DNA and our gene pool, and we value that deeply as part of our core essence as a company. So it is my hope that our, our characters and stories resonate and um, that the ones they do after that do even more. But um, giving a creative team, yes, the resources, more importantly, the creative space and time to explore, um, that is very important and a super tricky balance to walk in a technology startup. And we are both of those things at the same time. Uh, I enjoy that tension, um, but it is, um, it's not easy. Yeah. That, makes, that makes doing this sort of thing a very complex proposition. And I would say to a large degree, this is also difficult whether you're um, trying to start a YouTube studio or a mobile gaming studio. Yeah. The, there's a spectrum of things that involve both creativity and technology. And we are one of those. Um, we happen to pick one that involved a whole bunch of patents and opening up a whole new space to do it. That's a particularly perhaps ambitious initial play, but um, we felt that was worth that risk um, and that amount of time and energy technically and creatively to spend to do that because the reward would be characters who could talk back. Yeah. And if I could make that happen, even to a modest degree in 2013, that's a business I can really build on over the years to come and really have a really fun time exploring that space creatively and technically as we go forward. But T Tell me about how who invested in the company and how, how the company was built. Yeah, uh, our uh, first round was led by Gre Greylock and David Z joined our board. Yep. He has been an absolute joy to work with. Um, we were very lucky to have him with us. Um, True Ventures, First Round Capital also followed and a slew of angels. Um, our second round was led by uh, Sargur from Charles River Ventures. Yep. And so the uh, board is now David and Sar, myself, and Graham Walters. And Graham produced Nemo back at Nemo and has been in entertainment for about 20 years. So I get a very interesting balance of deep entertainment technology background and deep social um, bu company building background. And those two things both matter to us, um, but in even ratios. So it's a, I actually have a riot at our board meetings. They're super fun. Very cool. So, well, thanks so much. Where do we get uh, uh, Winston or? T uh, the Winston Show. The Winston Show. Yes, the Winston Show is available for download uh, later this week from the Apple App Store uh, for your iPad and uh, hope you enjoy it. Very cool. Thank you for, so much for coming out and talking to me about Thank it. you, Robert.